Hey guys, today we're going to learn how to find the IP address of our Raspberry Pi and also connect to the Raspberry Pi using SSH. And we're going to do this from my iPad. So if you want to connect to your Raspberry Pi from an iPad, this is how you do it. And we're going to use two programs. We're going to use Terminus as an SSH client to connect to the Raspberry Pi. And we're going to use Fing, which is a, a, a port scanner that I found. Um, on the App Store. And there are a few different ones you could choose. I happen to just pick this one. It's free and looks pretty good, or it, it, it should probably, it does work fine. I tested it out before this video. So let's first open Fing. The, the reason to do this is um, just to find, we're gonna find what the IP address of our Raspberry Pi is. And um, it is also important to make sure you're on the same network. In this case, we're on the, we're connected to the same Wi-Fi wi wi AP. So um, make sure you're on the same network as your your Raspberry Pi. Like don't don't connect to wireless if your Raspberry Pi is connected to, to a wireless network, or don't connect to the wrong Wi-Fi network. Um, like if your Raspberry Pi is on the wired network, your your um, I iPad is only going to be on Wi-Fi. You're not going to be able to reach it. So just keep that kind of thing in mind. And um, from here, I'm going to say scan for devices. So this is pretty straightforward, and I'm gonna say continue without permission because I don't, I don't need it to know where I am. Now we can see already it's it's spotted a few devices. Um, so you, you see it's uh, it's spotted. I don't know why it took away that info about my. At first it was showing Mulberry as my iPad, which it is, and now it's suddenly just stopped showing that. But um, the first one is TP-Link. That's my router, um, <clears throat> and there's a few other hosts connected here, and. Um, the, the one at the bottom here, generic, it's 192.168.0.231. Now that's that's my Raspberry Pi. Now I happen to know that because I connected to it from a few different devices already. Um, so this is this is like the third or fourth device I've connected to it from today. But um, if you didn't if I didn't know that off the top of my head, I would um, I would check each one of these. Now, Mulberry, I could rule out. It gives me the name, so I know what it is. And Archer A7 and TP-Link, that is, you know, that one up here, that is um, obviously my router. So you could rule those two out, but if you didn't know otherwise, you would have to check the four other devices on this list. You'd have to check these all these generic devices, 106, 110, 111, 231. You'd have to check each one of them to figure out which one is your Raspberry Pi. So um, I mean, it would take four shots, basically. Um, and if you look down here, I know one of the port scanners I used, I forget which OS it was on. I, I think it was Nmap on Windows actually told me which one was the Raspberry Pi. It was able to figure it out based on the MAC address. But if I click over here, let's see if it gives me any, um, so I guess it can't get the MAC address yet. All right, so that is interesting. I could, I could find open ports on this. If I want, um, not on your currently connected to while this device was found. Okay, so I guess it scanned while I wasn't. Uh, uh, okay, anyways, it, no, no, no point poking around with that. You could scan the ports if you wanted to check which one has port 22 open, and that would be the, uh, that's the SSH port, so it's probably our Raspberry Pi, unless you have other SSH servers on your network. Now, um, so that you're also gonna, I should mention you you should men, you should make sure that you have SSH enabled on your Raspberry Pi before you try to connect to it remotely over the network. So the first time you connect to it, connect with a keyboard and and, and a monitor and enable SSH there, and then come back and connect to it remotely over the network. And you don't need to keep the keyboard and monitor connected to it once it's set up on the network and it has. SSH enabled. Now, um, this 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 video I'm recording today is going to be a standalone video by itself, showing you how to do this on an iPad. But it's also going to be part of a larger video that shows you how to set up the Raspberry Pi, how to enable SSH, and how I'm going to have all of these combined. I'm going to like I'm going to show you how to do this from Android, Windows, Linux, Mac OS, everything. So I'm going to have a big combined video, and what you're seeing now is going to be part of that video, but it's also probably going to be a standalone video by itself. So if you didn't see me show you how to set up, how to enable SSH on the Raspberry Pi in this video yet, if you don't see that in this video, it means you're watching the one only for, for iPad, and you're going to want to go check the other video that I have that includes all the different 
you know, connecting to the Raspberry Pi from every platform. And it also shows you how to enable SSH on the Raspberry Pi. So go, go, go back to that video and check that. If that, if, if, if you haven't seen that in this video, it means I'm basically, well, the clip I'm recording now is going to be used in both videos. So if you're on the smaller video, just go check out that larger video. If you happen to be interested in those other pl platforms, or if you happen to need to know how to enable SSH on your Pi before connecting. But uh, right now we're assuming you've already enabled SSH on your Pi. So um, we're going to click on Terminus and this, um, all right, I don't, need to see this. All right, so I have a couple different hosts. I have a couple hosts saved, saved in here so far. Um, Hypersnail is just a host on DigitalOcean. And this one, it has a little Raspberry icon next to it because it recognized it for me. Um, I guess Terminus can recognize that it's running Raspbian. But um, this, is, this is the IP that we found in the port scanner. It's 192.168.0.231. So I've already saved this because I tried this out earlier today. So, um, you click click on this and had you oh, let me cancel this for a second had i not had this configured ahead of time you would have to go ahead and add a new host so let's say if this was your first time doing this i believe check on, click that plus mark and hit say new host and then you would just basically have to put in a host name which is for the host name you're just going to put in your ip address and I believe alias is just a nice name to know it by. And that's all you really have to do. Um, change the port if you're using a different port, but otherwise, and you could put in like a username and password to save that, but I didn't. So that's how I added that the first time. Now that it's added, it's already in there and I've saved it here. So I'm gonna use this one that I saved and I'm gonna enter the username. I'm still using the default Raspberry Pi username, which is Pi. So I'm gonna connect with that and ask me my password. Um, which I'm gonna have to edit this out of the video. Um, but anyways. There we go, there's my password. And if you're watching this, it, it means I have edited the part where I actually typed that on the keyboard out of the video. And if I remember it. And um, let's see here, connect. And there we go, we're logged in. Now, if, if you logged in the first time you log in, it's gonna give you a little message saying, hey, we don't recognize the fingerprint. Do you really wanna to connect to this? Just say yes. Now, if it's not your first time, it means something funny is going on and there might be um, people trying to, there, there could be you know hackers on your network or, or something's going wrong. So just be aware of that. But the first time you log in, it's gonna give you a little message saying it doesn't recognize the fingerprint. You'll have to either hit yes or type yes. Um, but in any case, I've already logged in, so it's it does recognize the fingerprint, so I'm logged in with uh, no problem. So I am logged in to my Raspberry Pi as the user Pi. So let's just run a few quick commands just to, just to test this out. So you could say uptime and hit return, and it shows you how long it's been up for two days, 43 minutes. Now, um, you, you, you could use um, you know all your standard... Uh, this is actually a pretty convenient keyboard. It's not perfect, but they laid it out nicely for people who are using uh, for, for SSH. So um, this is different from what you'd get if you were using like the text editor on, on iOS. So we'll just try this out, see how, um, and you, you can make the keyboard go away. Um, see, let's check the output of top. So this is, uh, this is how it looks on the, the iPad logged into our, I mean, this, is, this would be the same on any Linux host you log into from the iPad, but um, you, you get, the iPad gives you a nice view of it. So this is, with, with my phone, I'm not able to see all of the columns here, so it kind of cuts it off. So this is a little bit better to manage a Raspberry Pi than my phone. And if I had a physical keyboard, this would be amazing, but um, I actually haven't tried that out, so I'm not sure if you'd still be able to type without getting this, uh, this keyboard here. So anyways, you can do normal things like um, like you can hit start typing a command and you can hit tab like you would on the command line. And there's, there's a lot of different things. But um, let's say, say if you type part of a command, hit tab. Um, yeah, so you can tab it out and get suggestions. Um, and, it, and it gives, it makes it kind of convenient for you putting all these, these buttons at the top here. Um, you can hit control and it stays highlighted then until you type a character so you don't have to hold it 
um, which is nice and in, in uh, VI. And it looks like it's lagging a bit here, which is unfortunate. Um, I haven't had much issue with it lagging. And um, unless something just happened to my Pi. No, it's, I mean, it's still running. So yeah, maybe I'm having network issues. But um, yeah, I was, I was going to take a look at the CPUs and and, uh, and um, do, do a uname command and, and a few other things. But um, it looks like this thing is frozen on me. Um, let me try just disconnecting this and reconnecting. So let me see if I can log back in and if it cares. That is strange that it has to freeze on me like that. And I'm going to have to edit my password out twice now. All right, so here we go. We are back in. So it, it for whatever reason, it just froze up. Maybe the client, I, I'm pretty sure it's not the, the server on the, the Raspberry Pi. So maybe this, uh, the client I'm connecting with just has issues for some reason. Or who knows, maybe there was a disruption in my Wi-Fi or something. I'm not sure the reason for that. And um, no need to speculate. It's just, um, it's transient. So we're, we're good. So I am logged back in. And um, we could we can even use, like, let's see how VI looks over, over this. So VI, our, um, this blink file. And we can hit tab, tab it out. Instead of having to type it, and there we go. We can we can edit code in here using VI, if, if you like using VI. Um, but you, you can actually edit our Python code, um, you, you know, for, from our, our iPad on our Raspberry Pi, which is pretty neat. <clears throat> this is a this is a script that I made for another video, <clears throat> where I showed how to make a lead blink from. So this is the code to make a lead blink on the Raspberry Pi. So I did another video where I just dem demonstrated some of the basics of the GPI opens and stuff. So if that if you're interested in that kind of thing, just check out some of my other videos. I have another video on um, on how to do this. If, the, if that's the kind of thing you're into, you might want to hit the subscribe button. Um, you might want to hit the little bell icon and um, or just, you know, check my channel and scroll through my recent videos. I'm, I'm probably going to have that really close to the same time I publish this video that I'm, I'm making right now. So um, anyways, if we want to get out of here, um, it's a little bit more tedious than it needs to be. So um, by default, it doesn't have a colon here. We have to I type colon. Um, so this is a combination of the tediousness of, of VI and the tediousness. Not that VI is all that bad if you have a real keyboard, but um, let's say write quit, or in our case, we just want to quit. So on this keyboard, it's not perfect using things that use p keyboard shortcuts. You can do the basic stuff pretty fine. You can get around and manage things. And using VI is not bad, but it's not as good as having a real physical keyboard in front of you. Um, what, what else do we want to look at? So you name dash, and we got dash up here, A. You mean, you name, so there we go, Raspberry Linux, Raspberry Pi, um, ARM V71, so that's that's the Raspberry Pi 4. Has, has this, um, is that a 71 or 7L? In, in, anyways, um, hopefully you enjoyed watching. Give me a thumbs up. Um, leave a comment down below if you have any comments, criticisms, questions, whatever you want to tell me, anything you want to ask, just leave a comment down below. Um, hit the subscribe button for more content like this. Um, hit the little bell icon if you want an alert anytime I make a new video, so it'll alert you when I publish new videos. We're going to see a lot, lot more content like this coming up and a, a lot of other uh, really interesting tech content, whether it be servers, code, or whatever else, so stay tuned for that. And um, as always, hopefully you enjoyed watching this video and we'll see you next time.